dear partners, panelists, and participants of the conference. Today, our conference is coming to an end. During these three days of intense presentations and discussions, nearly 65 people presented their work and chaired the panels. More than 300 people attended the 13 sessions of the conference. The discussions were often very lively and sometimes we had to struggle to keep the time limit, which is a good sign of everyone's interest in the topic discussed. At the end of this conference, we would like to recall the various highlights of these three days. As part of this conference, we first wanted to give the floor to Professor Tania Murray Lee, a researcher who is internationally recognized and appreciated for the finesse of her ethnographic work and the power of her analysis. Professor Lee described very precisely the reasons why the population she observed in Sulawesi and Kalimantan, Indonesia, didn't go beyond the stage of sub-political criticism, or criticism that wasn't systemic and world changing but rather criticism in material terms, inscribed in the ideological order. She underlined the difficulties for the researcher to intervene as an organic intellectual to help articulate these critics, especially when the population studied willingly adopts and even desire to embrace the capitalist model that allows them to survive, particularly in emergency contexts, and often with the disengagement of the state. It seemed important to us to begin our first conference with a point of view that didn't consider social movements as natural, self-evident entities, and Professor Lee shows how difficult it is from criticism to emerge, to stabilize, to gain semantic power, to articulate, to endure, and to exercise concrete actions to change the world order. From this centered analysis, the question that runs through this conference is the nature of collective mobilizations as much as their form. As we have said, the form is the different levels of articulation or interruption that allow a low intensity critic to bring together people and resources into a movement that is identifiable from within and without. As for nature, it concerns the claims of the mobilized people, the representations they make of these claims, and their mode of action. In this respect, the nature of the mobilizations questions the very notion of outer politics. And it is here that the collaborative, participative, and comparative approach allows us to bring new elements of reflection and analysis. Indeed, what emerges from various cases presented during the three days of this conference is the diversity of ontological conceptions, the plurality of identities within them, and the modes of opening toward otherness. Secondly, it is possible to identify several degrees of normative decentering and thus of movement towards the alternative. Hence, we observe that none of the mobilization studied here or elsewhere is purely alter political, that is to say, totally turned towards otherness or the alternative. It is rather a question of different degrees of commitment within a movement, and this is why we prefer to speak of movements towards other politics rather than other political groups. What we also notice is the ambiguity of many movements when the movement towards orderness without alternative turns into multiculturalism, precisely that which is promoted by states with neoliberal inclinations and which aim to reify local identities and thus to depoliticize them. In mirroring this, alternative movements that disregard orderness easily turn into sectarianism. That's to say that they engage in processes of exclusion of certain individuals or certain fragments 
of the population. It emerged from this analysis that no movement is alterpolitical alone and that there is therefore a crucial interest in bringing together activists from different movements as well as researchers working on these movements. We hope that this conference will succeed in laying the groundwork for this dialogue by first allowing each participant to present their work and issues. As we go through the different sessions one after another, we notice a great diversity of mobilizations and ways of studying them. All together, all presentations allowed us to measure the extent of contemporary political, ecological, and cultural issues facing a profound and abrupt transformation. Several presentations offered a historical and geographical perspective that allowed us to, to take the measure and the urgency of this transformation. Each presentation underlined the innovative dimension and the creativity at work in the mobilizations to face these challenges. All presentations also showed the diversity of mobilization initiatives in response to the authoritarian turn in several countries in the region. These initiatives include national and transnational alliances, as well as micro projects driven by the will of a few individuals. In the valorizing sense of the term, the creative and opportunistic dimension is particularly highlighted in the presentations focused on mobilizations during the COVID-19 crisis. Panel 10 also presented innovative approaches to investigating the effects of COVID-19 on citizen political participation. Other crises with older historical manifestations give rise to memorial undertakings that resonate in the present and may constitute vital warnings against contemporary authoritarian reversals. Among these, we wanted to give voice to several groups and individuals from civil society in Myanmar to testify about their experiences of mobilization. If there were still any doubts about the vitality of social mobilizations in Southeast Asia, we hope that these different presentations provide convincing evidence of their richness and of the importance that must be attached to them in order to better understand the political dynamics that drive the populations of the region. The final part of our closing note aims to return to the issues at stake in our approach and thus to foreshadow the conference that will take place next year. The launch of the observatory hasn't been without its difficulties. For example, it has come up against a criticism from colleagues in the academic world who suspect us of lacking objectivity and distance from the subject of our studies. These criticisms also came from certain segments of the activist sector, which suspect scientists of observing activist phenomena with a preconceived notion and an exteriority likely to betray the empirical realities. This double constraint placed us in a form of dilemma, that of compartmentalizing the approaches but then losing the possibility of dialogue, or on the contrary, that of opening up to dialogue and risking criticism from all sides. It is the second path that we have followed by deciding to tackle the different obstacles that we face in dealing with alter politics through dialogue and the crossing of perspectives. We hope to have shown at this conference that the crossroads can be drawn and we wish to follow this path a little further. This is why for next year's conference we plan to open up further the event to people from the non-academic sector and even to focus the theme of the conference precisely on the meeting between engaged researchers, implicated activists, and concerned citizens. We invite you to follow the Observatory's news to keep you informed of the various advances in the organization of this conference. To close, we would like to warmly thank all the people who trusted us in this project, our financial partners, our technical and logistical partners, as well as all the members of the scientific committee and the chairs who did great support. And of course, all the presenters who invested themselves 
in making their presentation video and participating in the different discussion sessions. Once again, we would like to thank the audience of this conference. Before we meet again next year for the second edition, we invite you to exchange with us throughout the year on Alter Politics in Southeast Asia. You can also join Alter C as a member by contacting our email. You know where to find us. It was great to meet you all online. Have a good summer and stay well. Thank you.